this is the Provoke Brawn, and in this video I'm going to show you the installation process and how to wire up Lian Lee's SL120 V2 fans, and the logic behind it, and the different ways that you can do it so that you can then both fit the fans into the case and connect them up to the controller, and also connect them up directly to your motherboard, and how to hook them up to an all-in-one cooler as well. You see the Enzo XT Kraken Z73 in that case build just there, so I'm going to show you the process for that. Also going to show you what's what with a single fan and with a triple pack as well, so stick with me now. Now in the single fan box, you get the fan itself, as well as this cable, which has two connections on it. So it has a flat end that plug into the fan and then another couple of cables that connect up elsewhere. The fan itself, as you can see, is interesting from multiple angles and it has connections on two sides. But you'll also notice that there are some clips on the side as well that allow for connecting the fans together. Interestingly, these clips can be removed so you can actually take them off. And that's useful if you're installing on a radiator or in a system with a liquid cooled setup where you need the fans to be flatter at the very edges like that. So you can see so you can just twist those clips off and take them out of the way if you don't need them. So if this fan, for example, is at the end of a chain of fans, then obviously you wouldn't need those clips there for then connecting up another one. So these fans can be daisy chained together and clipped in, connected up into groups of four, potentially, up to a maximum of 16 fans per controller. It's worth bearing that in mind. But obviously also you can have fans on their own in a single connection. So a single fan is worth buying. And as you'll see, it's actually worth buying a set. If you're getting loads of fans, you can potentially just buy loads of single fans and then one pack with a triple pack. But more on that in a little while. Now in the single fan box, you get this cable here, which has a flat white connection on one end. And then it has the RGB connection and a power connection on the other end. This gives you various different connection options because you'll see that there's also this cable here included in the box which you connect up to the RGB cable and then that allows you to connect up this connector to the RGB header on your motherboard. So you're looking for a 5 volt RGB header on your motherboard. That would then give you control via your motherboard software to control the RGB lighting of the fans. So that's one option. You can do it that way or you can use the control box that you'll see with the triple pack to connect up and use Lee and Lee's L Connect software, which will give you much more flexibility in the RGB lighting and all the different things that you can do with it. But if you're looking to sync the RGB with other things that are connected to your motherboard, then this is an option. So the flat connector connects up to the one with the pins on it, so the bit where the pins are sticking out. You know, you install this in one direction, you'll see that there's a bit of a cover for those pins and then it just clips in there. It's quite a flat cable, which is nice because that obviously means it's not gonna get in the way and it's really neat when it comes to cable management as well. You then have those two cables to connect up and obviously you need to work out which way to position a fan to run those cables to the back of the case to keep things nice and tidy. They will need to run to the back potentially and then through and connect up in the relevant places. And again, I'll show you all this and where you connect them up as we go through. I'm basically going to show you the process for one single fan and then multiple fans up to the number you saw at the beginning. So you can install quite a few. And as I said, you can fit a maximum of 16 on one controller. Now the important thing here is that controller because it comes with a triple pack. So if you buy a triple pack with three fans in it, you also get a controller and you also get extra cables, which make life a lot easier. So you see this control box is dedicated for these fans. It has four different connectors on it, as well as two sync connectors, more on those later on. But you'll see that they have a sort of flat connection that plugs into them. It also requires SATA power from your power supply unit and some other things. So I'll talk about that in a minute. You'll notice on the back there's a flat area and you have a double-sided 3M sticker. So basically you can stick that somewhere in your case, probably at the rear stick it down and then that's held in place and that'll allow you to plug in all the fans as necessary. So this is what you get in the triple pack, three fans, a controller, and then multiple cables. Those multiple cables can be used in different ways as well, which is interesting. For example, you'll notice this cable here. This allows you to connect up one group of fans to another group of fans. And that's something you can do where essentially you could have two lots of three lots of fans connected up with this daisy chaining cable between them and then use the other cable to connect up to the control box. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Otherwise, you also have these flat connectors, 
These take the place of the dual cables on the single fan, and you'll have four of those. So again, you can have up to 16 fans connected to this control box, and you can do it in up to groups of four. So you'll have four fans in four groups, up to a total of 16 if you want, or less than that. And you use those flat connectors, and I'll show you how in a minute. You also have a USB connection that connects up to the control box and then to your motherboard. And then this other cable, which is a small little connection on one end that plugs into the controller. And then it has a fan connection and an RGB connection. And I'll show you where those plug in in a minute. Now, the good thing about these fans is that they are daisy chainable in that they're interlock and they connect up really easily using those clips on one side. You can only get this one way around. So you basically just have to line up those clips with the holes on the fans and then slide it in the other direction and then they just click into place. This makes life a lot easier because if you have a group like this and then you use the fat cable from the triple pack, you essentially only have one cable per group of fans, which is much neater than most other RGB fans out there, which usually require two cables per fan and then things get really messy. With this, obviously, you can have a group of three or four fans, for example, and only have one cable coming out of the end, which makes it a lot neater and a lot easier to manage. You then just need to work out where you're going to position the fans to draw air in or exhaust air out of your case. The front of the fans is where the air is drawn in through and then exhausted out the back through the rear. It's worth bearing that in mind. Now the little flat connector, as I said, once you've got the groups of fans connected up, just connect up that little flat connector and then that allows you to connect up to the control box. This is a lot neater, but again, obviously you need to work out where this cable is going to go. It's also worth noting, as you'll see in a minute, that this isn't particularly long, so you do need to work out where you're going to position the control box at the rear of your case so that you're then able to connect up multiple fans. But you have basically four different connectors on the controller that allow you to plug this in and connect up those groups of fans. It doesn't matter how many is in there. You could, in theory, just have one fan connected to this controller via that cable, or two, or three, or four, so you have the option. Now, these little cables, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate this USB connection that connects up to the bottom of the controller. This is important because when you plug this in and then connect up to the USB header on your motherboard, that then gives you the control over the RGB lighting and fan speed via Lee and Lee's L Connect software. So you need to make sure you download L Connect. That gives you the ability to then control the fan speed. And you may find that the fans don't spin at first if you don't have L Connect installed. That's because they have a zero RPM mode as well, so make sure you get that downloaded. This other cable with a little tiny connector plugs into the bottom of the controller again, and that cable then has the fan power connector. So the other alternative that you have for controlling the fan speed is via your motherboard software. So if you plug in this little tiny connector and then connect up that fan connector to a chassis fan header or a system fan header on your motherboard, especially a PWN controllable one, you can then control the speed of the fans connected to the control box via your motherboard software. So you have two different options for controlling the speeds, which is worth bearing in mind. You can also connect both, and then you can sync it up via L Connect, and then choose which way you're going to do it with the software on your system. So you have a couple of different options there. I'm going to quickly demonstrate some of the connections on the motherboard just to make this a little bit easier for you. But as I said, the USB connection is one of the important ones, and that connects up to the bottom of your motherboard. Usually you'll find two USB ports in the middle bottom of your motherboard connection, and you can just basically plug that in there and you'll see it down here at the bottom. You can only plug this on one way and you'll find USB marked on it so you know what cable it is and where it plugs into as well. If not, refer to your motherboard manual because you should find where that is. Now there's also a five volt RGB connection which has three pins on it. So look for the three pin RGB connector on your motherboard and make sure it says five V next to it, not 12 volts because it'll only take five volts and then you connect that up as well. Again, that gives you RGB control via your motherboard software rather than via L Connect. So you have a bit of flexibility in whether you're syncing up the RGB lighting of the fans with other things that might be in your system, whether that's RGB RAM, lighting strips, or other devices, or even RGB that's installed on the motherboard itself, because you might find that you have that. So you have some choices in what you do. There's then two flat SATA power connectors coming out of that control box. 
that need to be connected up to the flat SATA power connections that run to your power supply unit. If you're not sure about that, I've done videos separately on power supplies and how you connect up and what cables connect up. But basically, this is a daisy chainable cable. You can plug in the two power connectors here and that will give you power for the RGB lighting and for the fan power for all those fans. So make sure you plug in both of those and that you have enough to be able to do that. So that's the setup process for one group of fans. Now, obviously, I'm going to show you more because potentially you might have several groups and you're probably going to be using three. Most cases will require three groups or more, uh, three fans in a row, 320 mil fans connected up, let's say, three on the front, three on the top, three on the bottom, and then one at the rear. That's the logic that I'm going to be using here. And you may also want to connect up some to an all-in-one cooler as well. So again, I'm using that flat connector, and now you can see that I've got two groups connected to the controller, and they're just plugged in really simply like that. Then we throw in a third group, and again, the same sort of logic. But as you'll see here, if you move those fans around, so I've now positioned them to pretend that the fans at the front are in the front of the case and the ones at the bottom at the bottom and the ones at the top are at the top of the case. And then I'm connecting up the cables. But you see there's not much length in that cable. Obviously, this isn't inside the case, but you may well find this is a problem as well. Now, you probably won't have the controller mounted on the left like this. It will likely be mounted somewhere in the middle at the back of the case because that means you can hide the cables away, but you can see there's just not that much length here. So it's worth bearing in mind how much cabling you might have, and also where you're gonna be running that cable when it's in the case. But here you can see now we've got that set up there, and you also have the final fan. Now with that final single fan set to exhaust at the rear of the case, I can obviously use that flat connector if you want to quite easily and you don't have to use the cables that came with a single fan pack for example because there's that four cables that come with a triple pack so once you've got that you then have your group so i've now got the four groups three groups of three and one single fan all connected up via the controller now the other option you have as i said earlier on is you also have these two extra connections which allow you to basically group two groups together to then minimize the cables and potentially make life a little bit easier. So, for example, you'll see I'm now disconnecting the top group of three, and then we then have this cable which basically sits between them. So this cable clips into one of the fans on that connector, so you'll see where the flat connections are instead of the pin ones, you can use this cable instead. You need to remove the little connector that would connect between the fans normally, so that clip, and then basically click this into place in instead so now we're connecting up the single fan to controller and then obviously also has this connection here which then plugs in to the triple connection of fans so we now have got a three and one but you can potentially actually do this with more so this enables you to basically group the cables together on the fans and then have less cables running to the rear to the controller which is interesting and it gives you potential options so you can do this and you can basically connect up two groups of three in this way and then connect those up into the single connection on the control box. You can still only do a maximum of 16 per controller, so it's worth bearing that in mind, but it gives you the flexibility to basically choose how you're wiring things up. You do have then more cables at the front of the case potentially, and you also need to work out where to hide these cables when you're running them through, but you can see you can then group those up. So instead of having four cables then going to the control box, we've now just got a couple. And then you have those set up like that. So here you can see it just with the fans themselves, just to demonstrate. So two groups of three, daisy chained together, and then a single connection coming out of that going to the controller. It doesn't have to be three and three though. You can take some off. So you have three and two, for example, or as you saw a minute ago, three and one. So there's plenty of different connections there and flexibility in how you do that. So this little controller makes life a lot easier. It's definitely worth getting a triple pack. Otherwise you're gonna have a headache in terms of where you plug things in because you can connect up the single fan, obviously, to a chassis fan header and then an RGB header on your motherboard. That is an option, but life's a lot easier if you're using the control group. But what I wanna demonstrate is to go back to that single connection with the two on the other end. So the chassis fan power cable and the RGB cable, because you might have other uses for this. So for example, if you're connecting them up to a cooler. And if you have the RGB cable coming out of a single fan, you connect it up to the sync connection instead. 
So there are two sync connections on the control box. You can plug that in and you can set it up that way. And this is useful in other ways because that means that you can still control the RGB lighting via L Connect, but you can then control the power of the fans via your motherboard software. And also you can't plug in the fan power connection to the controller. So there's no way to do that as there might have been historically with previous Leon Lee fans. The other option, as I said earlier, is if you don't have the control box and you just want to use a single fan or even do groups of them, you can plug in the fan power to the chassis fan header and the RGB connection to the 5 volt RGB header and you can do it like that. You could also do that with groups of fans. So if you have three fans clipped together, then you have this single connection. You can connect them up like that. You could then connect another group up and do the same. So if you have multiple 5 volt RGB headers and obviously then connect up the system fan or chassis fan headers, you can connect up multiple groups to the motherboard. So you don't necessarily need the controller. It certainly does make life a lot easier in terms of controls and power and also connecting things though. And depending on your motherboard, you might only have one or two RGB headers, which can make things a bit more difficult. But that is the connection for what you're doing there and how to do it. So you can see there's loads of different options here in what you do. Now, one of the things I regularly get asked is what you do if you have an all-in-one pump, all-in-one cooler, 360 mil, for example, radiator that you want to connect the fans up to. This is a Corsair cooler, and it is possible to swap out Corsair fans for Lee and Lee fans. Corsair probably won't be very happy, but you can do it. So here you can see the process for doing that. I have three fans connected up. Now it's worth noting there are multiple ways to do this. So I'm going to show you the process for it. But I've got three fans installed on the radiator set to exhaust air through the radiator and out of there. Now one of the things that you could do is you could connect the fans up to the CPU fan header. So where the pump itself gets connected to the all-in-one pump header on your motherboard, you could connect the fan power up to the CPU fan header. So that means your motherboard's then controlling the fans like they're CPU fans and it will spin them up faster to then cool the radiator down to then cool your CPU down. So that would install at the top somewhere and you'll look for a CPU fan or CPU optional fan connections and connect that up like that. And then as I said, the RGB connection will then connect up to the control box or to the five volt RGB header on the motherboard. So that's one option and that's one of the ways you can do it. Another demonstration of things will come with the Kraken Z73, so a slightly different setup here. Same sort of logic though, but this time basically we're installing the fans to intake air instead. This is going to vary depending on your case, but you'll see if you're interested, I've done a build video on the, the case that I'm using where I use this Kraken Z73 in a bit more depth. But the little clips on the fans themselves, make sure to remove those before you install it because they might get in the way of the pipes. The other thing, mistake that I made here, don't make that, is to make sure you install the cable before you install the fans. So again, I'm using the cable with the two connections on it instead of the single flat connector. I think this is logical because you don't really want the fans on the all-in-one cooler to be controlled by the control box because the controller will kind of treat them like chassis fans and these aren't really. These fans are dedicated to cool the CPU down. So with the NZXT Kraken Z73, you'll find there's a breakout cable, which ha usually has connections for three different fans for power. So you can connect up the single fan connection that you've got on the three fans connected here and plug that directly into the pump header. That then gives the pump control over the fans. So both the pumps being controlled by the pump USB connection and the all-in-one pump connection that's connected up to your motherboard but also that pump then has the power to control the fans that are connected to it as well. So just one connection connects up to that breakout cable with those three. And then the RGB cable connection, that connects up to the RGB controller from the only via the sync connectors at the top. That means you still then have control over the RGB lighting, but the fan power is controlled via the NZXT and via your motherboard therefore keeping everything cool. Then you plug it all in, turn it all on, and you're away. And this is the final result. So hopefully you found this useful. Obviously a lot of depth, a lot of things to bear in mind. But if you've enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. And thanks very much for watching.